The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Chehalis Fire Washington, on your new apparatus, job number 29408. Please utilize this number when referencing your vehicle with Hughes Fire Equipment. Let's get started on an orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start at the front bumper. On the front bumper of the face, on the passenger side, is an electronic siren. Moving inward, you have a mounted air horns on both the right and left, and moving to the very far right hand side, or the driver's side, is a mechanical siren. Moving upward, you have a tray for storage of hose, and to the outer edge on the driver's side, a swivel inch and a half discharge port. Moving up from that location, equally on both sides, you have a turn indicator. Moving inside of that cluster, the headlight cluster, this is your low beam headlight, and moving inward would be the high beam. Moving up to that uh, top section here, this is going to be an emergency or warning light, and let's move all the way to the outside edge here. This is going to be your fire bell. Moving up to the very top or brow, these are your running lights. Located in the center is going to be a fixed forward facing floodlight. On the very top, this is going to be a full width light bar. Let's take a look underneath the apparatus. In the very front, you have two open ended tow hooks. Located in the center and just off to the right hand side of that, you're going to find your electronic plug in for the forward facing hitch mount. Moving just underneath that, you can see there are two right and left closed tow hooks. Moving to the very far side or the driver's side, this is your discharge port drain for the front discharge. And on the very bottom, this is an image of your TAC4 suspension. Looking up to the very top, this is going to be the termination points for positive and negative for your 12 volt system. And we'll take a couple of general looks at everything from here forward. On the right and left hand side of the bumper, you're going to find warning lights. We're going to take a look at the uh, cluster of lights here. You can see the turn and your cluster of high and low beam headlights. As a generalized view of the side of the apparatus, you'll see at the very top there's a side faced on both passenger and driver side floodlights. Generalized view of this location and here's a close up of that floodlight on the very top. Let's take a look at your mirrors on the passenger and driver side. There is a flat mirror and on the very bottom a convex mirror. Generalized view of the full side of the apparatus. I'll draw your attention down to the wheel. These are your G296 MSA tires. In the very center this is your uh, Stemco sealed axle. Looking on the passenger and driver side, this bullet is going to be a side facing camera. You can see also below your indication that you have TAC4 suspension. Moving upward, you have a small overside emergency warning light. Moving down further onto the cab body, there is a warning light next to the door handle. This is going to be your air intake for the engine. Moving up to the very top, both right and left, this is your water tank indicator. Generalized view, once again, of the passenger side and driver side. As you can see, the orange strap attached at the very top. Pull this strap. This releases your webbing to gain access to your crosslays. As we look inside the crosslay compartment here, once that is pulled and revealed, the uh, top section here houses a slide out shelf for a two and a half inch hose line and the bottom section houses two slide outs for inch and a half inch discharge. Up in the upper right hand corner near the two and a half, this is going to be a storage location for a long tool. As we move down, under, down underneath this section, you'll find a latch. This latch releases uh, inside the tray so it can be pulled outward and moved to the ground. 
you can see now that all three of your storages are open and pulled in various positions. Let's go ahead and move midship. We're going to look down at the midsection here where the pump panel is located. Generalized view of that location and we'll next go into some details here in the next set of uh, images. Let's go ahead and start in the upper left hand corner of your pump panel. Large diameter intake. Moving over to the right hand side. This is going to be your inlet. This is a three component for foam. This is auxiliary, strainer, and also uh, discharge. Up in the upper right hand corner this is going to be a two and a half inch discharge. Moving down you can see there is a warning label indicating that you not look inside the center of the eye of the impeller. This is going to be an override. I'll talk a little bit about that in the next set of images. Down at the very bottom this is going to be an additional discharge. Moving down to the very bottom there are four discharge drains across the very bottom. We'll talk a little bit about those here in the next set of images too. And this is going to be your manifold drain. Looking up at the auxiliary foam functions, this is the foam inlet, foam strainer, and foam drain. This is going to be your large diameter intake. Moving over from that, we're going to see the driver side auxiliary intake. Moving back down to the very bottom, these are once again driver side auxiliary pump drain, driver one, and number three discharges. Looking up in the very center of the uh, pump panel here, you'll see that this location is where the manifold drain is. Correction on the right hand side but up in the very top is the driver main inlet override. This is for your electronic valve. We'll talk about that here in the next set of images also. Looking at this step here, this is a fold out step. Once this handle has been released or pulled down, this gains access for it to flip out away from the apparatus and create a step. Generalized view of the side or cab section body of your apparatus. You can see each of those compartments individually uh, numbered. Let's go to compartment number one. Generalized view of the pump panel. Let's start in the upper left hand corner. This is your main unit radio. Moving inside to the gray area. This is going to be your master intake and master discharge. Once again we'll talk about these more in detail. Moving to the right this is going to be your foam A tank level indicator. And moving to the very right hand side, these are going to be some warning indicators and we'll have some close up shots of those here too. All the way across from the very left hand side, this is going to be your pump information regarding the pump discharge pressures. And as we move across, you can see there are various uh, discharge valves here. In addition, at the very far right hand side is your Pierce governor and that also has some information uh, in the later slides. Moving to the right, this is going to be for your generator. Let's start at the very top. In the upper section here, there is a light that illuminates when your pump is engaged properly. This is your master intake. Moving to the right, this is going to be your master discharge. Moving down from that location, these are the test ports for vacuum and pressure. And then moving to the very right hand side, this is going to be your foam tank level indicator. Very top, yellow illuminating light for the PCM fault. Just beneath that, you have a yellow indicator for cooling fan air. And in the very center, located here in the black, this is going to be an audible speaker with an adjustment level on its volume. Moving down at the very left hand side, you can see this is the location of your maintenance operation schedule. This also houses a job number and individual information on pump pressure, test pressures in addition with speeds and a governed RPM. Once again, this is that minimum operation maintenance schedule I just referred to. As you can see, there's the job number. This gives you your GPM and PSI and also your RPMs. And at the very bottom, this is indicator for your governed speed at 2,400. Let's move to the right-hand side or just down from that. This is going to be your front flood, driver side scene, passenger side scene, a couple of future locations for switches, and in red, your air horn. Moving over to the actual panel itself. You're going to see a variety of discharges. The discharges are color coded which match the discharge port at the actual exit of the water. Looking across here you can see you also have water and foam indicated in red and there's the various discharges that are labeled there. These are all locking discharges. On the right hand side your Pierce Information Center. Check engine light, stop engine light in the upper right hand corner. As we move further down you have your RPM and oil and level and battery indicators. This is going to be your tank water. Moving down further down from that, this is going to be your pressure control. Moving just to the right of that location, this is going to be your RPM control indicator. And as we look further down, you'll see control mode and a pressure uh, correction reset. 
Looking down at the very bottom at the wheel, this is your throttle and idle control. Generalized view of the next section down on your pump panel. Let's take a look and we'll start with some uh, information in the upper left hand corner. These are going to be your Acron electronic valves and we'll talk about those next. This is going to be your driver in, uh, main inlet electronic valve. Moving over to the right hand side, this is your passenger main inlet electronic valve. As we move down from that, this is going to be your Husky 12 foam system control area. It's in the red. And as we move to the right of that, once again, this is that driver main inlet and passenger main inlet. Generalized view, we're going to see some uh, gauges and valves across this section. This is your deluge discharge. This is going to be your tank to pump. The next one over from that is your tank fill or recirculating line. Once again, these are all locking valves. Large diameter passenger side discharge, electric Acron valve, rear inlet, Acron electric valve. Moving to the right hand side, this is an inch and a half pre-connect. And moving up to the very top, this is going to be your primer fire pump. Moving down from that, this is going to be your Husky 12 foam system specifications and also instructions. At the very bottom left hand side of this uh, panel, this is going to be your cab tilt location. As you can see, there are instructions on this also with caution and warning labels. Be cautious when raising and lowering and make sure equipment is secured. Starting in the upper left hand corner, this is going to be the driver side main inlet air bleed. Moving over is going to be the passenger side mare inlet air bleed. Moving to the right, this is going to be your pump overheat indicator. These will auto light. This is going to be your flush valve drain. And to the right of that is the primer drain. We'll have some further images to the images of the right behind this access door. And we'll talk about that in the next set of slides. But first, let's take a look down here at the lower section. Across the very bottom, these are going to be all discharge drains. Starting in the left, you have your number one cross lay. Moving over, additional cross lay, two and a half. As you move all the way across, you'll find in the very far right hand side, this is going to be a variety of different with the black labels uh, for rear inlet, manifold, and also for uh, large diameter discharges. These are all the drains located for those individual uh, discharges. In that compartment behind that access door, this is going to be your pump override. The yellow handle at the very top is going to be for your foam operations in its current configuration laying horizontal. This is for normal foam operations. Uh, move that handle to a vertical position and that will be your operation for filling of foam. Let's go ahead and move further off to the right hand side of this compartment and we'll look at the uh, vertical compartment that houses two uh, adjustable shelves that are pull out. As you can see, you have a lower and an upper shelf that uh, can be accessed and pulled out for equipment. In the upper compartment here, you can see the yellow coiled, con yellow coiled control center. Um, that is the control box for your night scene uh, light that's mounted on top of the truck. Looking to the left, you have a shore out light, 15 amp. Moving to the right of that, you can see the placard that says G1, stands for generator. It is our only panel for the generator and this is going to be the uh, breakers for each of those individual breaker uh, switches. Uh, as we uh, take a look at that uh, shelf to be able to pull in and out, there is a level on the a lever on the right hand side. Simply depress the lever. This will allow the shelf to be pulled to its outward position to restore repeat the uh, instructions. Let's go ahead and take a close up look at the control box, uh, which is for your light mounted on top of your apparatus. Uh, built by Welbert, this is going to be your uh, light skate. Uh, at the very top, this is going to be the emergency stop reset button and then controls just beneath that. To the left hand side, this is your breaker box for the generator panel. You can see the individual breakers for each one of those um, individual components. Looking at the general view of the side of your apparatus, We'll talk a little bit about those, but at the very bottom, you can see left and right of the wheel. Those are going to be your folding wheel chocks. You can see also mounted on the very back half of the apparatus. This is going to be an attachment point, which also has power in the red uh, cover. But let's look up at the left hand side. This is going to be a location for potential bottle storage. Moving just to the right of that or to the rear of the wheel, you'll find some compartments here. First, an emergency light, additional bottle storage in blue. Uh, the cap here is locking. It's for your DEF. 
just beneath that, you're going to find a silver cap, which is non-locking, and that's going to be for your di diesel filling. Let's go ahead and start with compartment number two. This is going to be the vertical compartment just above the rear tire. As we look access into here, you can see there is an adjustable shelf uh, in this compartment. At the very top of the compartment, actually on the door, there is a Velcro pull down uh, strap. This gains access for pulling the actual door down in case you're unable to reach the very top section of the door. Let's go ahead and move to compartment number three. This is going to be your vertical compartment in the rear of the apparatus. This is a two section door. Simply turn the quarter turn on the silver handle. Reach inside the door at the very bottom. You'll find an additional lever. This lever accesses the opposite door and will allow you to gain 100% access into this compartment. As you can see at the very bottom, there is deck storage. Just up from that, there is an additional pull-out shelf with that same locking mechanism on the right-hand side and two adjustable shelves on the very top. Upper in the uh, upper right-hand corner, you're also going to find some additional shore power plugs. Let's go ahead and look at the very upper section of the body. At the very top, you'll find an emergency warning light, a handle, and down from that on the side, you'll find a floodlight facing to the passenger and also to the driver's side. Underneath the cab, wheel chalk, and also your access point for attachments. Looking as a generalized view of the side and rear of the body, but let's go ahead and focus in on the rear section of the body and we'll cover some of the components uh, located there. Looking underneath uh, the truck, underneath the very back step, you're going to find some lights on the very bottom for the perimeter lights. In addition, in the very center, you'll find an attachment point or tow hook. And as we look to the left-hand side, you'll see this shaped light. This is going to be a work light or step light. Moving up from that, you're going to find your reverse lights. Moving up from that, you'll find your left turn light and right turn. And moving up from that in red, these are going to be your brake. Let's go ahead and look at the very uh, left-hand side. This is going to be your shore power inlet. Moving up from that on both right and left, you have a warning light. Moving up from that location, there is a cluster of switches, and I have a close-up of those to give you a little bit more detail on those. You have a variety of steps on the side of this. These are all fold-down grab steps. And as you can see at the very top, both right and left, this is going to be a rear-facing flood. Moving to the center, this is going to be your traffic advisor. And just up from the traffic advisor is a center-mounted rear-facing camera. On the right-hand side, this is going to be your rear inlet drain for uh, releasing air from the large diameter here in the rear. That's your large diameter intake. This is going to be the rear inlet air bleed. Once again, a side view of that uh, image along with your tail lights, And then we'll take a look at the other side also. Let's now go ahead and look uh, at the roll-up compartment door. Once that door is in its open position, you can see you'll have storage locations in here with a pull-out shelf and a fixed shelf above that. This is a close-up of your rear backup camera and also traffic advisor. This is your shore inlet, which is a 20-amp auto-eject plug. Generalized view with the steps in the downward position for accessing up to the very top. Once again, this is that shoreline inlet, which is an auto-eject on the uh, driver's side. These are your hose bed lights and rear scene lights. At the very top, you can see a warning light at the top with additional step lights. Moving to the right, you have three compartments. This is a compartment that houses your 24 and 14 foot roof. Just up from that, this uh, compartment will open. Once that compartment is open, that will uh, have additional uh, images here in the next set. We'll talk about those. This is going to be your 14 foot and your 20 foot extension ladder located in this compartment. Moving up to the next compartment, this is going to be a little bit smaller of a compartment. This is going to house a long tool storage in addition with your folding 10-foot ladder.
Moving up from this location, a vertical lift door gains access to long storage. Generalized view starting on the driver's side moving across. You can see you have a discharge port there for an inch and a half pre-connect. And moving just further over from that, you can see that there's a two and a half inch pre-connect. Uh, the two and a half has the ability for water and foam. The inch and a half is uh, purely only water. At the top on the step here, you have a step light in addition with a warning light. And at the very top, you can see you have a rear facing and side facing warning light. Let's go ahead and take a look at the very top of the apparatus. You have a closed apparatus hose bed cover. Looking on the left and right hand side, you also have hose bed storage. Also, each of the uh, dividers are movable to accommodate the types of hose that you may choose to use. Uh, once again, on the right and left hand side of the apparatus, there is closed uh, illuminated storage bins. On the passenger side, this is going to be your access point for the 200-foot uh, uh, electrical reel. This reel feeds down into the lower compartment. This is merely the location where the reel is stored. Uh, to access that, it's through that compartment underneath it. Looking at the very top, this is going to be your master stream or deluge device with an extend -a gun uh, type uh, extender. This is going to be your tank fill for top fill water. Moving over is your foam tank for A foam. And moving over to the left-hand side, this is going to be your uh, fill location for hydraulic foam pump. To the right-hand side, this is the fill for your generator hydraulic oil. Just a, dis additional images here to see a close-up of those fill locations. On the front of each one of those tanks, there's also a visual indicator as to the level of uh, oil. Looking to the passenger side in this compartment, once accessed, this is going to be your coolant. Just to the left of that location will be an additional access door. That access door houses the pumps for your fan and power steering. You can see the uh, left pump is going to be here uh, for the drive fan, and the right side uh, pump is going to be for the power steering. You'll also find just mounted in the center, uh, not under any of the diamond plate covers, but just under this black cover here. Uh, once this is accessed, uh, simply turning this, uh, this will gain access to the fill for your radiator. Generalized view, uh, looking forward to the front of the cab, this is going to be your night scan. Uh, in addition, you can see on both right and left hand side a no step or warning signs for stepping in this area. A full view of the very front of the apparatus including the air conditioner and your light bar. We'll now take a look at the uh, passenger side from the rear. We're going to talk about compartments 4, 5, and 6 next. Starting with compartment number 4 in the very rear. You can see this has a pull-out shelf in addition with two fixed adjustable shelves. In the upper right-hand corner of this compartment, you're going to find your shore outlet for a 15-amp plug. There are four plugs in this compartment. Moving to the very top, you'll also see a warning light mount at the top, and just as the opposite side has, a side-facing uh, floodlight or scene light. Underneath this section here in the bottom of this uh, location near the tire, this is going to be the attachment point once again for uh, tools or hitches, in addition with electrical power or even a winch. Starting in those compartments, uh, just front and rear of the tire. This is going to be SCBA storage. Both of these uh, right and left hand sides have uh, attachments so that the bottles do not become dislarged while in travel. That's what the uh, webbing is for inside. Just underneath that, you're going to find a warning label that indicates that exhaust gets extremely hot and be cautious in where you park. 
We're going to go ahead and take a look at that compartment that's just above this location, just above the wheel. This is the vertical compartment. This is where that 200 amp cord reel comes into. You also have an adjustable fixed shelf in this location. As you can see here, there is an orange ball at the end. This is to prevent the cabling from retracting all the way into the cable location. As you can see, you have on one side of the plug house plugs, and on the opposite side, you'll have twist lock plugs. Just beneath the reel, you'll find a silver uh, placard here that indicates a push button for your cord reel rewind. This is for the 20 amp, 200 foot cord that's just above that. Also on the top of this door, there's going to be an additional Velcroed strap. This allows for operators or users to pull that shelf down if they're unable to reach the very top. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, forward section. This is going to be the tall vertical compartment which is compartment number six. Looking in this compartment at the very top section, you'll see you have an adjustable shelf. Moving down from the lower compartment in this section, there is uh, adjustable shelves in addition with a pullout shelf. In the upper right hand corner of this compartment, there is additional outlets for shore power. This is going to be a 15 amp shore line outlet. Generalized view of the center section, same concept, pull the orange strap, releases the mechanism to gain access to the cross lay hose. But let's talk a little bit about the uh, bottom section here in the pump panel. Upper left hand corner, this is going to be a strainer. Moving down, just a warning label regarding not looking into the eye of a uh, large diameter intake or discharge. This is going to be your large diameter intake. Moving down from that, this is going to be a large diameter discharge. Moving just to the uh, left hand side of that, this is going to be the location where you insert the tool to manually uh, utilize the override. Same with this location, this is your manual override. And also on the right hand side, this is going to be a two and a half inch intake. Down at the very bottom, this is going to be a uh, discharge for air. Moving to the right hand side, these are going to be four levers regarding uh, drains for those. Uh, once again, upper left hand corner, your water strainer. Large diameter intake, large diameter discharge in purple in the left, for as far left there is your override. And as you can see to the far right hand side is also the location where you insert the tool for the override uh, on that uh, large diameter intake. This is going to be your water strainer drain, large diameter passenger, and then the rest are all discharges uh, drains. This is going to be that folding step similar to the opposite side of your apparatus. Generalized view of the front cab. We'll talk a little bit more about the details of the components with inside here next. First, direct your attention to some warning labels on the side of each of the doors. Um, this is for your safety. In the center of the uh, latch here, you can see that it's marked in red. This will indicate that the door is in the locked or unlocked position. Just in front of that, you're going to find your windows. These are four located on the driver's side. There are individual controls for each window at each location uh, in the other door sections. This is your grab or pull handle. Generalized view looking from the pat or driver's side into the uh, driver's space or operator space. Let's go ahead and get started with some of the components here. You can see that all seat belts are color coded in red for easy visual identification if an individual has their seat belts on. Located just underneath the operator seat, there is a pull for moving the seat forward and backwards. 
and an air in, uh, adjust for lifting and lowering the seat for comfort. On the lower section, let's talk a little bit about some of the controls here on the left side and also a little bit about some of those uh, placards on the right hand side. Uh, warning and caution labels on the right hand side, but I'd like to direct your attention to this yellow placard here. Um, this is going to be the manufactured by Pierce Manufacturing. This is going to have detailed information. For example, the manufacture date June of 2016. Just to the right of that, an additional location for the job number. Uh, moving down from that, you'll find your gross vehicle weight rating. And as you move further down, this is additional helpful information, including your VIN. Um, and lower down from that in the same placard is going to be all of your fluid capacities, types, and amounts that would be utilized. Let's start down at the lower left-hand side of the operator's feet. You're going to find at the very bottom section down here, uh, there are a variety of different uh, ports and controls. Uh, we'll talk about those also. But let's start at the very bottom. And uh, the ports here are going to be for your trans and engine ignition ports for diagnostic. And moving up from that is your engine diagnostic, ABS, and regen information. The uh, large black uh, device here is going to be a warning uh, device that will emit sound. You can control that by simply turning that for uh, increased volume or decreased. This is going to be the quarter turn on off master battery switch. Generalized view you can see at the very bottom there's a foot pedal for your mechanical siren. And let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the stuff on top of the dash. Starting on the left hand side this is going to be your ignition switch once the battery is on. You can actually engage the ignition switch and then this will be the start switch up above from that. These are momentary switches and from here uh, this is going to be in red your uh, emergency or warning hazards for flashers. This is going to be your left and right mirror controls moving to the right of that. This is going to be an emergency master for your emergency lights moving over from that. This is going to be your headlights for park and for headlight and moving from that you're going to find uh, your uh, panel lights which adjust for brightness and dimness of your actual dash. On the opposite side this is going to be an OK for high idle in green. You can go ahead and engage the high idle switch. We'll also engage illuminating light in the on position. Moving just to the left hand side on the steering column this is going to be your lights for high beam and low beam in addition with wash for windshield and also the spray for windshield wipers. On the column itself there's going to be a push for tele and a pull for tilt. This allows the steering column to move forward and backwards and up and down. Looking at the dash, generalized view of the dash, we'll break that down to the next set of images here starting on the left hand side of the dash. You're going to see in the lower left hand corner your transmission temperature, oil pressure, DEF fill level and water. Moving over is your tachometer. Moving over to the other side is going to be your rear air, fuel, front air, volts, and RPMs or speedometer. This is going to be an image with the battery on at initial startup. It will engage uh, all of the lights to ensure that they're all operational. You can see there is a variety of different information that will alert you for individual problems within the apparatus as you continue to operate. Down in the lower section in the center this is going to be where your tripometer and miles are in addition with the temperature for outside temperature. Moving to the right hand side this is going to be the selector for resetting your tripometer and selecting through those menus. Generalized view uh, just to the right about knee level here for the operator. Uh, we'll talk about these components here in the next set of uh, images. Let's start at the very top. This is the pull to apply parking brake and push to release. Just beneath that is going to be your Allison transmission pad for driving and choosing to pump the apparatus. To the right of you, this is going to be your engine on off for your brake, high and low, auto engine brake, mirror heat, load manager, and generator PTO. This is going to be your Pierce climate, con climate control center for heat and defrost, also for AC and for heat. The next set of switches down, this is going to be your stationary OK to pump and roll, your water pump, foam system, a passenger side window, driver side windows, and passenger side cab windows. Moving down from that, you've got a pump pressure indicator here. 
You also have a water tank uh, to indicate the uh, amount of water in your water tank. And just to the right of that is going to be a foam A, which will give you also information on the amount of foam in your tank. To the right-hand side of that, this is going to be your Pierce Information Center. Um, this gives a variety of different information on your fuel status, uh, engine con uh, considerations that might need to be adjusted. Um, below that, this is going to be your um, PA system in addition with your electronic siren. And as you can see just below that, there is a future location for additional uh, components. Moving to the right of that, this is going to be a 12-volt access for a cigarette lighter or, for example, uh, USB power. Moving up once again onto that uh, Pierce console, you'll see when the reverse is engaged, you'll have your uh, image uh, displayed on the uh, screen here. Just as if, for example, you turn on a right or left turn signal, it will also provide that image in this location also. Let's go ahead and look overhead of the operator. As we look overhead, I'd like to direct you to the very center of the apparatus, this red light here. This is an, a visual indicator uh, for a compartment ajar. Just in front of that, this is going to be your seatbelt information center, which gives you information if someone has their seatbelt on or does not. This is going to be uh, located in the very center of the apparatus, uh, your computer access and main radio. Once again, looking overhead, you have two of the fans pointing uh, forward of the windshield, and there are also uh, pull-down visors for sun blocking. Another uh, generalized uh, view of this uh, information center here, when this light is on, please do not move the apparatus. You may have a compartment door open and might need to be checked. Looking at the uh, Pierce Information Center for seatbelts, um, if it's in the red, uh, the seat is occupied, but there is no seatbelt on. If it's in the green, then your uh, OK is in green checked off. Up in the left-hand corner, you're going to find the uh, Pierce information as it came from the manufacturer for height, length, and gross vehicle weight rating, in addition with your Pierce job number. Let's go ahead and take a look overhead at the variety of different uh, switches here. I'll break those down individually in the next set of images. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, this is that uh, job number on the information placard here in yellow for the height 10 feet 1 inch, length 31 feet 5 and a quarter, and your gross vehicle weight rating at 25.25 tons. And just below that, once again, your job number. Let's go ahead and look at the panel switches here. Emergency master. This is your repeater, siren brake, opticom, high beam flash, and your master scene lights. Moving just to the right of that, you have a front flood, driver side scene, passenger side scene. There are two future switches for components and then a rear scene switch. Moving just to the right of that, this is going to be the control center for your traffic advisor. Moving overhead, you have two pull cords for your air horns, and you also have your AC vents at the very top also. This is going to be your main speaker for your unit radio. Generalized view of the overhead section here. This is going to be your uh, swivel or rotating mount for your computer, which is accessible for the operator to see, in addition for the passenger uh, to see. There is an adjustment and tension on this, uh, located on the left-hand side of the uh, fixed location mounting. Looking from the operator over toward the passenger in your pass-through section here in the front cab, You'll find uh, in the center a compartment. Behind that, you're going to, or above that, you're going to find LED lights. Behind those LED lights, you're, you're going to find a charging system uh, from Motorola for your portable handsets. In addition, uh, behind the passenger seat, you're going to find your 12 volt auto charger. Uh, this is why you're plugged into shore power. It charges the batteries on your apparatus. In addition, in the very far uh, corner of the apparatus here on the passenger side, you're going to find a air compressor. This is the air compressor for keeping pressure with inside your brakes. Uh, just to the rear of that, you're going to find a map book or shelf here. Just as a, a general reminder that NFPA requires that uh, all things be stored uh, in the cab and secured. Overhead, you're going to find a push on, push off, red and white. These are throughout the cab in the front and the back for uh, individual lighting, whether it's red or white. This is a visual uh, from the passenger side. 
Once again, there are also these lights in the very back uh, for the uh, occupants in the back. Let's take a look. This is the shore power outlet. This is a 20 amp shore power outlet. When things are plugged into this and your shore power is plugged in, this will power these devices. Looking back at the very back, you have two SCBA storage locations, two LED lights on each side, and two radio chargers on each side of that. Mounted in the very center of that, this is going to be your helmet storage locations, and just beneath that you have additional storage, which is a long storage area that has uh, webbing or netting on top of that. This is going to be where your SCBAs are stored. Once again, underneath that you can see the portable uh, LED lights. As we move just to the downward position of those locations on both right and left, you'll see there's also a portable radio charger in the very back of your apparatus cab. These are going to be your helmet storage locations. Let's go ahead and move just to the outside of the apparatus, looking in the rear section of the compartment, uh, just to direct your attention down to the lower section here at the step location. Uh, in that step well, you're going to find that there is a storage uh, compartment. Uh, simply open the compartment uh, door on the right hand side, you'll see the latch. Once that compartment door is open, you can see inside and there it reveals uh, a large section of storage in this location. Uh, moving up from that step, uh, once you're uh, inside the cab, you'll find an access door. That's in the next image here. This access door will gain access to the actual components of the motor, which you can actually check for fluid levels for oil and transmission. Here is that compartment door in the open position, which you can see the engine oil and the engine oil add. As we look as a generalized view inside the cab, you can see that you have SCBA mounted seats in both the front and the rear. Looking from the passenger side in the doorway, you can see the warning labels on the right hand side, but let's go ahead and move inside the cab in this location. And as we move inside, you'll see a pull handle or pull or step up handle on the right hand side in black. On the very bottom on the floor, this is going to be an electronic siren foot pedal. Underneath the passenger seat, there's going to be uh, a ride system here for moving the seat forward and backwards by the lever and uh, inflating or deflating the air for comfort on the seat. This is going to be a view of that mechanical siren uh, foot pedal uh, on the uh, passenger side. You can see on the very right hand side down in the lower right, this is going to be the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. The white uh, is a pull cord for your bell rope to activate your bell, which is mounted on the outside of the cab. Moving up from this location, we'll look at the interior section of the cab from the perspective of the passenger. As you can see, you have your computer stand in addition with your radio. Let's look just down beneath that section. This is going to be your uh, repeater for your radio system. And as you look to the left hand side of that uh, repeater system, you'll find 12 volt access points. You'll see one is round and the other two just in the upper section. Those are going to be uh, the USB style. Let's go ahead and look overhead of the passenger and take a look at the components here. In the very center over the head of the passenger, there is a focused white spotlight. Moving up from that location or onto the dash itself, you're going to find a, a handheld spotlight. Uh, you can see this is the position that it is stored in. Uh, make sure you don't store it in the other direction because it could, could, could cause damage. Looking overhead, you have a driver's side scene, front flood, passenger side scene, your re, uh, repeater, in addition with your siren brake and an emergency master. Overhead also, this is your Firecom system for your headsets. This is the volume and squelch control in addition with radio or auxiliary controls. Moving just left of that, this is going to be a weather radio in addition with a CD player, AM, FM. Let's go ahead and move just to the rear uh, behind the passenger seat. This is going to be a, a bus block for 12 volt power. Um, just in the front section again, this is going to be on your left hand side of the passenger. This is an additional power outlet for USB power. Moving between the seats of the front, uh, you'll see the LED lights, but just underneath that, there is a compartment that pulls and opens. Uh, as you can see, it's now in the open position. Congratulations on your new apparatus, uh, Chehalis, Washington, job number 29408. 
If you have any questions regarding the content or information within this video, please contact your Hughes Fire Salesman. Thank you.